Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're only gonna wait one or two minutes. I'm gonna start making my waiting time shorter. So whoever comes after a certain time, they're gonna miss out on the first part and they have to wait till the whole live stream's done for them to even uh, figure out what's happening in the first part. So uh, we're gonna wait around two, three minutes this time. So we're, I'm gonna start shortening, shortening it one by one uh, until we hit exactly two o'clock. So. Uh, at 2.03 we'll get started and then on Monday it'll be 2.02, on Tuesday it'll be 2.01, so on and so forth. Um, 
but yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. So uh, today's worksheets might seem a little long, but it's because there's a lot of empty space, but the concepts are essentially still the same. So the concepts don't really change much. Um, we're still essentially working with the same, same idea. Okay, just one second. Okay. If you have any questions, please let me know. Well, hopefully you guys are doing just fine. Just one more minute and then we'll get started. The worksheet you should have open uh, or printed is this one here. So we talk about uh, logarithms, so your favorites, which are word problems. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about uh, exponential word problems and that's it for the day. Uh, and then I have an announcement at the end. Uh, this should take around 30 minutes maximum. I don't think anything more than that. So it should be pretty, pretty quick and smooth. Okay. So it is 203, so let's get started. So logarithm scale in the physical sciences. So there are many uses for the logarithmic scale in the sciences. You may have already uh, seen them already. If you've taken chemistry and you've taken physics courses, you have definitely been exposed to exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, you just had no idea, especially back in the day when you were on your calculator, you first got your first like scientific calculator, you're like, oh, look, oh, there's a log in button. Like, you know, now that's not what it is. It's not log in, it's log and lon. And those are separate buttons um, for separate functions. And so now, you know, and we're unlocking more and more features of your scientific calculator as math, um, as your math knowledge kind of develops. So let's look at look into uses for the logarithmic function. Um, so the first one is uh, specifically on earthquakes. So the Richter scale defines magnitude of an earthquake as m is equal to log uh, i over i naught. So if you ever see a zero, usually in science we say i naught. And so i is the intensity of the earthquake measured and i naught is the intensity of a reference earthquake. Now, oftentimes you may also see this written as i2 and i1. And that's when the magnitudes of two different earthquakes are specifically compared. And we're going to go through that example, actually. Um, so to put simply, uh, each step on the scale represents a 10 times its intensity change. So if we say that something is magnitude 7, then that would be 10 times more, ten, more intense than magnitude 6 and then 100 times more intense than magnitude 5, and 1,000 times more intense than magnitude 4, so on and so forth. And this is the scale that actually follows with the pH scale in chemistry, which we'll dive into deeper soon. So example one, the California earthquake that interrupted the World Series in 1989 measured 6.9 on the Richter scale. The quake that caused the 2004 tsunami in Indonesia was measured 9.2. So how much more po powerful was that Indonesian quake? So pretty simple. Um, we have our formula, but we are going to write our formula slightly differently. And instead, we're going to do I2 over I1. So we're comparing the second highest over the first. So we're, we're making it a ratio, right? We're comparing uh, the strongest in comparison to the lowest, right? And so when we have that here, 
the magnitude is now going to be the difference between the two earthquakes, right? Since we're comparing how much stronger was one than the other, we should figure out how much magnitude is, uh, is the difference. So we're actually going to do 9.2 subtract 6.9 is equal to, okay, is equal to log of I2 over I1. And there we have it. So we have our function here. And so we get this. And so when we do this, we get 2.3 is equal to log of I2 over I1, where we're comparing the two here. So the top one would be the 2004 uh, tsunami and the bottom one would be the 1989 as it's smaller. Now, as a result, once we do this, we're going to convert this back into exponential form. So we should get, since this is log base 10, we're going to get 10 to the power of 2.3 is equal to I2 over I1. And when we get uh, 10 to the power of 2.3, let's see on my scientific calculator here, that's going to give me approximately 199.5 uh, is equal to I2 over I1. If we uh, round that here, if we round this value, it would be around approximately 200 is approximately equal to I2 over I1. And so how much po more powerful, we can say that the Indonesian quake was 200 times more powerful, right? So we have the comparison, the ratio of the intensity of the second and the first is 200, which means it's 200 times more powerful. And that's a very simple application for earthquakes. So let's move on into a different example. So I'll try to fit and keep that on the screen for now as we move on into our next example. Okay, uh, for number two, so decibel scale. So this is sound. Uh, the decibel scale compares sound, where L is the difference in sound levels in de decibels, and I is the intensity of the sound, and I naught is the threshold of human hearing, which means I over I naught is the difference in sound intensities. So you'll notice that the the function is almost identical. The only difference is that the decibel scale now has a times ten on it. Pretty simple. And so now we can go through some examples with the I naught, uh, with the decibel scale function. So let's go uh, through that example here. So example two, a sound is 5,000 times more intense than one that is just audible. How many decibels is the sound? So what are, so usually I follow my own uh, word problem kind of idea, which I call the guess method, which is givens, unknowns, equations, substitute, and solve. So first we write down our givens. We're given that a sound is 5,000 more in, times more intense than one that is just audible, which means our I is equal to 5,000 I naught, right? It's 5,000 times more intense than a basic threshold of human hearing. And then we have our unknown, our what is what do we what are we trying to solve for? And what we're trying to solve for is L. We don't know what L is, which is our, our decibels, right? Then we write down our equation. So L is equal to 10 log of I over I naught. Sorry about that. It's just my phone going crazy with messages. Okay, there we go. So once we have that, now our next step is to substitute. So when we substitute our values, we can write 5,000 I naught over I naught. And now we can solve this question. So you'll notice that when we plug in 5,000 over I naught, um, the I naughts are gonna cancel each other. 
and we're just going to get 5,000 in the bracket. And now we can solve that. Well, 10 log 5,000 is pretty uh, simple to calculate because it's base 10. You just plug it into your calculator. And what we get is approximately, L is approximately equal to 36 point, oh, sorry, round it up, would be 37 decibels. Okay. And so therefore, the sound is 37 decibels. And there we are. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Matten asks, how did you get 10? On uh, which question, Matten, or which part? In this, uh, in this function, the 10 is a part of the formula. So if you look here, for sound, it is automatically in the formula. So the 10 is already there within the formula. Sorry, I didn't see your question as I was writing it down. Okay. So let's go to example three. This time we're given two decibels of sound and it asks us how many times louder uh, than Niagara Falls is a jet engine. Um, so this time it's the same thing as example one. You'll notice like, hey, this is exactly the same thing. That's not too bad. So when we compare we're going to get that L is going to be the difference between 160 and 90. So we're comparing these two sounds, right? 160 minus 90. So we're going to get L is equal to 70, right? So we're working with a 70 decibel difference. We are trying to find I2 over I1, right? The difference, how much louder is the sound of a jet engine in comparison to Niagara Falls? And so when we plug it into our formula, we're going to write our formula down. Right? And I over an I naught is interchangeable with I2 over I1. So when we substitute it in, we're going to get 70 is equal to 10 log of I2 over I1. And of course, before we convert to exponential form, we get rid of the 10 by dividing by 10 on both sides. And that's going to give me seven is equal to log I2 over I1. Converting to exponential form, we get 10 to the power of seven is I2 over I1, which means it just a bare difference of 70 decibels means it's 10 to the seven times stronger more intense of a sound and the so the decibel scale is actually very interesting believe it or not if you go to like clubs and parties with loud loud music you're starting to hit 90 to 100 decibels which is pretty loud to be honest with you sometimes even louder so uh therefore you know it's 10 million times stronger right therefore a jet engine sound is 10 million times stronger than Niagara Falls. And there we have it. So that's example three. So far so good. Nothing out of the ordinary, right? Pretty straightforward. The pH scale, if you have taken chemistry, this should not be new to you. This should be free marks for anyone who has taken chemistry, right? This is the basic acidic uh, pH determination formula, right? If you have the concentration of hydronium ions, you can get the pH of a solution. And of course, I just put the pH scale for reference where seven is neutral. Anything less than seven is called acidic. Anything greater than, greater than seven is called alkaline or a base, right? So let's go going into example four. The hydronium ions in blood measured in at a concentration of four times 10 to the power of negative seven. Uh, what is the pH of blood? And so, well, let's write down our givens. We write down the concentration of hydronium ions.
and that's 4 times 10 to the power of negative 7 moles per liter. And so we need to find pH, which we don't know. We need to use the equation. So pH is equal to negative log of the concentration of hydronium ions. We can just plug that in right away. And we're going to get 4 times 10 to the power of negative 7, like that. And if you take out your scientific calculator, uh, you should be able to solve it. So we get uh, 0 0.000007, uh, 4, sorry. Uh, and that's going to give me pH is approximately equal to 6.4. And so we write, therefore, the pH of blood is 6.4. Pretty simple. Okay. So there's example four. And now let's do the opposite. Uh, I'm going to try to fit that on the screen. Sorry. Uh, let's do the opposite. Example five. What is the concentration of hydronium ions in, in a pool if the pH is 8.2? So this time it tells us the pH. We need to find the concentration of hydronium ions. And so we use the same formula. So you'll notice a lot of these questions, as long as you understand which, where which numbers go, it's pretty straightforward. And so we copy down our formula. And it's going to be 8.2 is equal to negative log of H plus. And when we do that, we're going to get negative 8.2 is equal to log of H plus. And plugging in our, changing it to exponential form, we're going to get this. So when we calculate this value here, 10 to the power of negative 8.2 is going to give me 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 9 is equal to the amount of hydronium ions. And if we, since we know what the units are for this because it's concentration, we can say therefore the concentration of hydronium ions in a pool with pH 8.2 is 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 9 moles per liter. And there would be a long full sentence. This just means with. Look, already done three questions. Yeah, I made a lot of space. Uh, it's because I normally write big, and so my notes take a lot of space. If you write small, you might be taking up a, a much shorter portion, which is fine. I apologize for wasting a lot of space here. Uh, I'll try to be more uh, compact about my notes, and maybe I can write a little smaller. Um, but yeah, so that's example five. So that's pH. And that's all the logarithmic examples. pH. Earthquakes, pretty simple stuff. So now we're jumping into exponentials. We're more than halfway done our lesson today. So let's jump into our exponentials. So when we talk about our exponentials, uh, we use this general equation here. So the basic growth or decay formula is given as A is equal to A naught, bracket one plus or minus R, to the power of n. A by itself is the final amount, right? A naught is the initial amount you started with. R is the rate of growth or rate of decay. And n is the number of growth or decay periods that have passed. Now, a good thing you have to realize that if your rate is given as a percentage, you have to change that percentage to a decimal. And be careful what you're adding and subtracting, right? Some people think um, that given a certain value, like, oh, it increases by 112%, uh, they change it to 
or 1.12 and they add it to 1. I'm like, well, the 1 already means 100%, which means if we're saying 112, we're just adding 12. So there are slight change. Like, you got to look at the wording and be very careful with the wording. But I think you guys have the idea. So example one, let's use this uh, here. So blue jeans fade when washed due to the loss of blue dye from the fabric. If each washing removes around 2.2% of the original dye, how many washings are required to give a pair of jeans a well-worn look, which is a 30% dye ratio. So let's look at what we're given. Okay. Uh, let's assume, right? Let's assume that... Um, the original amount of dye is a hundred, right? Let's assume that the original amount of dye is a hundred and we're, we're just using a hundred as a hundred percent. doesn't really matter what the value is. We are not given a starting amount of dye. We're just given that it needs to be 30% less. So we can quickly say that if a naught is a hundred, which is the original store bought blue jeans, we can say that we're trying to get it to a final amount of 30 okay and this should make sense because when we divide these two we get 30 percent then what else are we given we're given the rate and we are losing 2.2 percent which we can convert that to 0 0.022 so we don't ever use percentages within our equations we always convert them to a decimal once we have that down uh, we need to figure out how many washings are required. So we don't know N, the number of washings that are required to make this come true. We don't know. So our formula now, when we take our original formula, A is equal to A naught of 1. And since this is the K, it'll be subtract 0 0.022 to the power of N. Okay, and I'm going to plug in all these numbers now. So 30 is equal to 100, 1 minus, uh, let's solve that, 1 minus 0 0.22 is uh, 0 0.978 to the power of n. Okay. So 0 0.978 to the power of n. Once we have that down, I'm going to zoom in a little more so you can see. We're going to divide by 100. We're going to get 30 over 100 is equal to 0 0.978 to the power of n. Now from here, oh no, we can't solve for the exp exponent. That's not possible. So what we can do now, since we know logarithms, we can now apply log on both sides so remember that in mathematical equations if you remember from even quadratic uh, equations if you remember how to complete the square we added a number and subtracted a number right and that's only allowed because we're not changing the equation we it's like we were adding zero and so we can alter these equations to suit our needs for solving the equation so for another tactic you can use is to apply log on both sides, which will not change the equation, but it will allow us to use logarithmic rules to solve for our exponent. So watch here. We have 0 0.3 is equal to 0 0.978 to the power of n. I'm going to put log on both sides. I'm going to get log 0 0.3 is equal to log of 0 0.978 to the power of n. Now, if you remember from my lesson previously, we should you already know one of the power rules, which is I'm going to bring down the n to the front because exponents can become coefficients in logarithmic functions. So I'm going to get log of 0 0.3 is equal to n log of 0 0.978. And now this becomes favorable for us our n is no longer in an exponential position. It is now in the front as a coefficient, which means we can now divide this by log of 0 0.978, and that should equal 
n. This is solvable on your calculator. Log of 0 0.3 divided by log of 0 0.978 is going to give us 54.1 is equal to n which means I'm running out of space here, so I'm not going to write it. Therefore, approximately 54 washes are required to give a pair of jeans a well-worn look. Right? So now we are able to use these exponential functions and solve them using logarithmic tools and laws. Right? By applying log on both sides, it allows us to bring that expo exponent down and solve for the exponent. Okay. So I'm going to keep that on the screen, and I'm going to give you three minutes to try and solve example two. I'll put three minutes on the timer now, and try your best to solve example two. And this is a growth function, so just note that it will be, instead of minus, it will be a plus. Okay? So, best of luck, and I'll see you in three minutes. One thing to note, the interest rate is per year, but it's happening twice a year. So be careful with that. That's a little bit, that's my hint to you. All right, so let's take this up here. Uh, it's asking us how long does it take for $2,500 to grow to 4,000 if it is invested at an interest rate uh, of 6.5% per year and compounded semi-annually twice a year. So we're given 
A, our final amount, which is 4,000. We're given A naught, our initial amount, which is 2,500. Uh, we're given a rate, which is 6.5%, but that's every year. This is happening twice a year. So we need to make sure we divide it by two. So we're actually going to get 3.25%. And so that's 0 0.0325. Okay. So if you did not divide by two, you would have gotten a different answer. We're trying to solve for n. And so we can plug it into our, va our equation. Uh, 4,000 is equal to 2,500. And then 1 plus 0 0.0325 to the power of n. So we're going to get 4,000 over 2,500 is equal to 1.0325 to the power of n. So dividing that out, it's going to give us 1.6 is equal to 1.0325 to the power of n. Let's log both sides because we are solving for the exponent here. So we're going to do that. And this allows us to write our n in front of our logarithm. And so we get log of 1.6 divided by log of 1.0325 is equal to n. And so the amount of times it takes here, so log of 1.6 divided by log of 1.0325 um, is going to give me approximately 14.7. Okay. Now this is how many times for twice a year, right? So one would be one half of a year. Two would be two halves of the year. So this is 14.7 as uh, half years, which means it would take approximately seven years to grow to 4,000. Okay, so this is semi-annually. Because that's what it was said here at the beginning. So we need to convert it back to years and so if that's 14 times semi-annually, that must be 7 times annually. Okay. So now, we can go to our final portion of our uh, lesson today, which is a general formula for... Uh, the general formula we just learned can be altered for specific situations such as doubling time and half-life. So doubling time, uh, the, the base is already 2, but you'll notice the exponent is slightly different. T is the amount of time that passes and D is specifically the doubling time, right? The time it takes to double. Half-life is the same where the ratio or the base is 1 half and we have T is the amount of time and H is the half-life. And so let's go through a half-life example. Okay, so how long does it take 750 grams of a radioactive substance to decay to 50 grams if it has a half-life of 10 days? And so we are given some important information here. We can, same thing, we can go A naught is 750 a is equal to 50. We have H, which is our half-life, and our half-life is 10 days. And then we need to solve for T, which is our time. So plugging it into our formula, our formula is A is equal to A naught of 1 half 
to the power of t over h. When we plug in our numbers, we're going to get 50 is equal to 750 of 1 half to the power of t over 10. Then we solve it the exact same way we have solved our, solved our previous two examples. So dividing by 750 will give us a half to the power of t over 10. 50 divided by 750 is going to give us uh, a decimal. I'm just going to round it. Don't round it on your calculator. So it's going to give me 0 0.0667 is equal to a half of t over 10. Logging both sides, it's going to give me log of 0 0.0667 is equal to log of a half to the power of t over 10. That allows us to bring this down. So we're going to get t over 10 of log 1 half. So let's continue the work up here. We're going to get log of 0 0.0667 divided by log of 1 half is equal to t over 10, which means moving the 10 over before we solve this so we can keep it as accurate as possible. we get this here. So plugging that into our logarithmic function, uh, we're going to get log of, technically we should be using um, the 50 divided by 750. So I'm going to be doing that to make it accurate. I'm going to divide that by log of well, 0 0.5 and I'll multiply that by 10. And so that's going to give me 39.1 is equal to T, approximately, rounded. And so my final answer, well, if half-life was in days, that means my time must be in days, as the units must match. And so we can write at the end, therefore, it will take... thirty nine point one days to decay to fifty grams. And there we have it. I'm gonna zoom out so you can see that as a whole. Okay. So this is something you have done before or you have seen before just from today. Um, and it's just a special way of doing half life and doubling time. And of course if it's tripling time, it's just the three inside the bracket, right? So um, a lot of these questions aren't particularly difficult. It's, it's whether or not you understand where do these values go into my formula, right? And then solving it using the math, and that's it. So in my personal opinion, I don't think it's significantly bad, right? Because uh, a lot of people do dread word problems. But these, I think, are a little more straightforward than your usual word problems that you may have faced before. Um, so yeah, that is it for today. Uh, you have your homework questions listed here at the bottom. Uh, please give these a shot. There's only six questions because uh, I wanted to go one of each type, essentially. And your announcement is that I will most likely have a quiz or quest uh, prepared for this unit on Monday. Once this quest is complete, we will be moving on to our final unit, which is compound functions, on Tuesday. Okay. So your final unit of compound unit uh, compound functions will start on on Tuesday, and you will not have a live stream lesson on Monday, but you will. I will post up the quest. There is no hard deadline. Uh, the hard deadline is just before school ends. Um, but I highly suggest you do it on the Monday, focus on the quest, uh, and then we can move on into our next unit or else you're gonna feel overwhelmed uh, at the end of it, okay? Are there any questions? Are there any questions or comments from anyone? 
questions, comments, concerns. Anyone at all? How many more units do we have? One. Compound units is your last one. Uh, your teach assist marks will be updated over this weekend. So I'm going to be doing that over the weekend with your, uh, like I said, your math space marks. The reason why I haven't done it yet is because math space marks are due tomorrow or math space assignments. If you still see them, it's due tomorrow. Um, so I want everyone to finish it before I input it or else I have to keep going back and forth and seeing who I did it. Uh, can I get a 5% boost for showing up? No. You cannot. You get my appreciation and seal of approval for being a good student. And you can rub that into everyone's faces and say, Mr. Choi told me I'm a good student. Personally. You get, you get that. Other than that, you don't get anything else. All right. Uh, if there are no que other questions or comments, uh, that is it for today. So take care, everyone. Have a good rest of the, uh, the day. Have a great weekend. Uh, and I'll see you on Tuesday. And make sure you do your quest on Monday. All right? Peace out, everyone.